In this problem, we are calculating a confidence interval for a mean again. But the key difference in this case is that we don't know the population standard deviation, or sigma. The particular study we're working with uh, treated the effects of an acupuncture treatment or a sham treatment on reducing the number of migraine headaches experienced per day. So there are two different studies. We'll be calculating two different confidence intervals and comparing them to see if we can make any judgment as to the effectiveness of acupuncture when redu trying to reduce the number of migraine attacks. So let's start with calculating the confidence interval for the first set of data when we're studying the subjects that were treated with acupuncture. We're going to construct a 95% confidence interval, and the steps we'll take are exactly the same as we did in the previous example. We begin by identifying the parameter. And in this case, we're studying a mean again. It's a mu. And this mu is the mean number of migraine attacks per day. That's what we're interested in estimating. And in the next step, we have to make sure that the requirements are satisfied. Well, the sample size is 142. And our requirement is that either the distribution that we're sampling from is normal, which could well be true in this case, or the sample size is greater than 30. Well, certainly 142 is much greater than 30, so regardless of whether the original distribution is normal or not, we've easily satisfied the requirements, so we're good to proceed. In the next step, then, we want to look through the paragraph, read it carefully, and assign each number its appropriate statistical symbol. I've uh, highlighted in red here the key fact for this problem. 1.4 is the standard deviation, but it's a sample standard deviation. It's an S, not a sigma. And that means we'll be using the T distribution, not the Z distribution. 1.8 migraine attacks per day, that is an X bar or a sample mean. Our confidence level is 0.95. And when we use a T distribution, we need one additional piece of information, and that's the degrees of freedom but that's easy to calculate because the degrees of freedom is just equal to n, the sample size, minus 1. So in this case, it's 141 degrees of freedom. Now let's continue with the process. The next step is to calculate alpha. Alpha is 1 minus the confidence level, level so that's going to be 0.05, and we'll need to use actually alpha over 2, or 0.025. When we set up our confidence interval, and this is for a 95% confidence level, we put 0.95 probability or area right in the middle of the distribution, and we'll put alpha over 2, or 0.025 area or probability in each tail. And then our task becomes to find the T values that correspond to having 0.025 area to the left, or 0.025 area to the right. If you have a TI-84 calculator, you have uh, included in it an inverse t function, very similar to the inverse normal function. Uh, to calculate the, the left critical value, it would be inverse t, 0.025. Remember in these inverse functions, both the inverse norm and inverse t, it's area to the left. be 0.025, and in inverse t you need one other, one other parameter, that's the degrees of freedom, or 141. And the critical value for the right would be inverse T, 0.975, area to the left, 141. And we get the values of negative 1.9, negative 1.977, and 1.977. For those of you that don't have a TI-84, you can get the critical values using table A3 in your text. Uh, you'll have to uh, do two things. First, the left column gives you the degrees of freedom. Uh, you will find the row that corresponds to the degrees of freedom of your problem. Now, in our problem, we have 141 degrees of freedom. Our table jumps from 100 to 200 degrees of freedom. All right, when that happens, find the row that's closest to your actual degrees of freedom. So we're going to use 100. 
and go right across that row. You selected that row. Now we have to pick the right column. We'll look at the top. It's area in one tail or area in two tails. Uh, in this case, it's a 95% confidence level. The area in two tails is 0.05. So the critical values we're looking for are 1.984. And that's close to what we got using the calculator. And we can use that for our computations. So let's go ahead and calculate the margin of error. We have the formula that looks very similar to the one we used with the Z distribution. I've got two differences. Instead of T Z sub alpha over 2, I have T sub alpha over 2. I'm using the student T distribution. And up here where I used to have a sigma, now I have an S. When I substitute the values for this problem, I end up with 0.232 migraines per day as E, my margin of error. When I calculate the confidence interval, I do it in the same way. It's my point estimate, x bar, plus or minus the margin of error. Substituting those values in, I get 1.568 to 2.032. My inequality, emphasizing again that I'm studying a mu, a mean, is 1.568 is less than or equal to mu, is less than or equal to 2.032. And my sentence that I summarize my findings is I am 95% confident that the interval from 1.568 to 2.032 contains the true mean number of migraines per day for the group that received acupuncture. All right, now we can repeat the steps that we just took to find a confidence interval for the group that received the sham treatment. Now I'll go through it much quicker here. Uh, again, we're working with an S, and that's 1.2. That's my sample standard deviation. For this group, the point estimate, or the mean, the sample mean, is 1.6 migraine attacks per day. N is 80. There are 80 in the group, so the degrees of freedom is 79. Repeating the steps on the uh, previous slide, you will find that the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, is 1.333 to 1.867. So I'd write that as an equality. 1.33 is less than mu, it's less than 1.867, and we're talking about migraines per day. And the English sentences that summarize our results. I am 95% confident that the mean number of migraine attacks for those who received a sham treatment is between 1.33 and 1.867. So we've calcula calculated the two confidence intervals. Now let's uh, address the original question. Do we believe that acupuncture really reduces the mean number of migraine headaches? Well, let's look at our results. I put them in a table here. These are 95% confidence intervals. The first one is for those that received acupuncture, and the second, second one is for those that received a sham treatment. And notice those two intervals overlap uh, quite significantly. And because they overlap, then our study doesn't provide any evidence that acupuncture actually decreases the number of migraines per day. So we would say the data does not support the claim that acupuncture reduces the mean number of migraines per day. 